what proportion of the rays coming out of the source hit that screen? Or phrased differently, what is the angle between the ray hitting the bottom of that screen and the ray hitting the top? Or rather, since we should be thinking of these lights as being in three dimensions, it might be more accurate to ask, what is the angle the light covers in both directions perpendicular to the source? In spherical geometry, you sometimes talk about the solid angle of a shape, which is the proportion of a sphere it covers as viewed from a given point. You see, the first of two places this story, since we're we should be thinking of, thinking of these, is going to be useful, is in understanding the inverse square law, which is a distinctly three-dimensional phenomenon. Think of all of the rays of light hitting a screen one unit away from the source. As you double the distance, those rays will now cover an area with twice the width and twice the height. So it would take four copies of that original screen to receive the same rays at that distance. And so each individual one receives one fourth as much light. This is the sense in which I mean a light would appear one fourth as bright two times the distance away. Likewise, when you're three times farther away, you would need nine copies of that original screen to receive the same rays. So each individual screen only receives one ninth as much light. And this pattern continues. Because the area hit by a light increases by the square of the distance, the brightness of that light decreases by the inverse square of that distance. And as I'm sure many of you know, this inverse square law is not at all special to light. It pops up whenever you have some kind of quantity that spreads out evenly from a point source, whether that's sound or heat or a radio signal, things like that. And remember, it's because of this inverse square law that an infinite array of evenly spaced lighthouses physically implements the Basel problem. But again, what we need if we're going to make any progress here is to understand how we can manipulate setups with light sources like this without changing the total brightness for the observer. And the key building block is an especially nice way to transform a single lighthouse into two. Think of an observer at the origin of the XY plane and a single lighthouse sitting out somewhere on that plane. Now draw a line from that lighthouse to the observer, and then another line perpendicular to that one at the lighthouse. Now place two lighthouses where this new line intersects the coordinate axes, which I'll go ahead and call lighthouse A over here on the left, and lighthouse B on the upper side. It turns out, and you'll see why this is true in just a minute, the brightness that the observer experiences from that first lighthouse is equal to the combined brightness experienced from lighthouses A and B together. And I should say, by the way, that the standing assumption throughout this video is that all lighthouses are equivalent. They're using the same light bulb, emanating the same power, all of that. So, in other words, assigning variables to things here, if we call the distance from the observer to lighthouse A, little a, and the distance from the observer to lighthouse B, little b, and the distance to the first lighthouse, h, we have the relation 1 over a squared plus 1 over b squared equals 1 over h squared. This is the much less well-known inverse Pythagorean theorem, which some of you may recognize from Mathologer's most recent, and I'll say most excellent, video on the many cousins of the Pythagorean theorem. Pretty cool relation, don't you think? And if you're a mathematician at heart, you might be asking right now how you prove it. And there are some straightforward ways where you express the triangle's area in two separate ways and apply the usual Pythagorean theorem, but there is another quite pretty method that I'd like to briefly outline here that falls much more nicely into our storyline, because again, it uses intuitions of light and screens. Imagine scaling down the whole right triangle into a tinier version, and think of this miniature hypotenuse as a screen receiving light from the first lighthouse. If you reshape that screen to be the combination of the two legs of the miniature triangle, like this, well, it still receives the same amount of light, right? I mean, the rays of light hitting one of those two legs are precisely the same as the rays that hit the hypotenuse. Then the key 